Made in Fayetteville just sent us a text uh, that says anything under eight wins in football will be disappointing for him this year. Anything under the Sweet 16 for men's basketball will be disappointing. He's not sure what to expect out of baseball. Well, after you watched Arkansas men's basketball on Flow Sports for the last four games, what do you think about this team? Long, athletic, fast, going to defend really well. Wonder about the three-point shooting, but the athleticism is off the charts. Speaking of athleticism, mental athleticism, Matt Zimmerman joins us here on Halftime, radio analyst for Arkansas men's basketball, spotter extraordinaire for the football broadcast, my partner when it comes to that too. Zim, how you doing? What's up, Phil? I'm physical and mental extraordinaire. Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. Not just the mental aspect. Drew, don't let him go off easy <laughs> over there. I got you, Coach. I got well, you. Yeah, Zim, you, you had, had to pump me up. You had to, be, you had to be ready mentally when the second team that you might have prepared for, Toto Estrella's Barcelona on this yeah. European tour, was not the team that Arkansas played. They played Catalan no. Elite as well. What was that like for you? I don't know what it was like for the team, but for a broadcaster, I mean, you kind of get ready to see one team and then yeah. another shows up, or did it matter very much because it was an well, exhibition? Well, it was different over there because and I've been there, and it's usually a little bit uh, chaotic, and people you think are going to be there may not show, or they, you know, they're on holiday over there. This is their vacation time. So these teams that they put together, they're guys that have to be available and in the area to play. And so even the team... Uh, the team that was supposed to be the best team, which we played game four, you know, their their best, their couple of their best players didn't play. They're not even over there yet. So, you know, you get these rosters and you start researching them. And what's really funny about that, Phil, is the second game was the one game Brett Dolan could not do the broadcast. So I was on, and uh, my play-by-play guy who lives in the beginning of Greensboro, North Carolina, does a lot of stuff for North Carolina A&T and schools out there. But he does, he deals with flow sports quite a bit. And, uh, Spencer was his name, and, and we were. I was on there with Spencer, and he had done a ton of research, and he kept calling me in the days before I found out this about this guy, and I, and I kept saying, Spencer, they they may not even play like like those guys. You know, it's just it's, it's kind of uh, unpredictable with overseas. And sure enough, before you know it, like not only does he not play, that, that everything changed, all the names changed, and uh, the team we thought was going to play he was not really that team. And uh, a couple of the guys that we thought were going to play still ended up playing with the other team. So it was a little chaotic. You just kind of roll with the punches when you're, when you're talking about an overseas trip. Well, uh, what stands out? It looks like this team might be a little ahead defensively than offensively. Yeah. Or then again, I don't really know what to, what to make of a European tour because Arkansas just had better athletes by far than any of the teams they faced. Yeah. And maybe that'll be the case in the regular season, but, you know, not every game, certainly. It no. won't be that obvious. Well, it will be in the bye games and in a lot of the November, December games. We'll be just be, and, and some of the SEC teams, there's some teams in the SEC that are a little down that the Hogs will just be so much more athletic. Just, they'll just be able to run by them, blow by them. And there, there was times in Europe where, you like Anthony Black, at one time in game three when, he, when the rim got bent, he just – he just caught it, drove hard left. It was like in half court action. It's just like the sea parted. Same way with Brazil, the sea would just part, and they would just go flying in there and dunk. And they're going to be bigger and more athletic than most teams in our league. But teams in our league aren't going to just open the door for you and, and not at least try to go contest it or try to at least make you try to score across the top of them. Um, so it will be different. Um, but they are. That's the strengths: is the size, the athleticism. You have. Phil, you got probably four. You know, you got four guys that are going to be, you know, NBA level guys that can really. And, and, and some of those guys will be great NBA players. I mean, Nick Smith is tremendous. He's good as advertised. So athletic, beautiful pull up game. He shot the ball well. You know, got a little bit banged up the last game. I thought it was really smart coaching. Didn't try to didn't try to push it and make him play. He could have played. I think he'd have been fine. But you know, you come out of this thing with no injuries. You got Anthony Black is. <laughs> he's going to be a tremendous pro as well, and he's going to have a great year here. Hopefully, more than one year. But he's he's those two guys. I mean, those are those are going to be high picks. Jordan Walsh is going to be is, is super super athletic guys in Brazil. I thought when we got Trevin Brazil coming out of a program that's been losing, right? I mean, we mm-hmm. beat the brakes off them last year twice. They were bad, and Missouri and Brazil to come out of that and as be as good as he is. He looks like an NBA player, 
Mm. And he's he's a high flyer, and he's all over the over. He's two two and a half feet above the rim all the time, running or just jumping straight up and down. And and it's incredible how athletic he is. And there's just a lot of guys. Those those four high level players, and uh, you know, I think coach is already even though it was just four games over their field, he already kind of started molding that rotation a little bit. And you can kind of see where that rotation will probably be once November comes, but. You know, as far as things that little questions, the three point shooting was good, not great, and but a lot of that has to do with over there, and the rims are a little floppy, and it's a little different. And then also, you know, the turnovers were there was just a lot of turnovers, and I think he's probably happy about that now because he's going to be able to harp on that every single day until you play your first game, November seventh. Well, Zim, the, the height and the length is is one thing that stands out about this roster. I mean, you look, you bring in the Mitchell twins. Uh, you got Jalen Graham transferring in out of Arizona State. And, and then there's Brazil, who I think was probably the most spoken about player uh, on, yeah. on the trip. Chuck brought up a point yesterday that I think is, is, is correct. There's a difference between defending at the rim and defending above the rim. And this is a team that looks like, and it's not just Brazil, it's just about everybody. Because that's what comes with yeah. athleticism. If you can dunk, you can defend around and above the rim. That's where they might stand out a little bit compared to other teams is the defense are above the rim. Yeah. Well, and that's it's going to be a really good defensive team. You know, last year you go 28-9, and throughout the course of those 37 regular season games, we gave up 68, a little, little bit over 68 points a game. And, that, and in the conference, it was even better at 67. I think this team will have a chance to hold opponents in, in the mid 60s, two or three or four points a game lower than that 68. That's how good defensive potential they have, and the shot blocking will be a way difference. And you know, last year we blocked in, in all those games, we blocked 281 shots, which is, uh, I mean, 153 shot, but which is pretty good. But you know, basically 37 games. What is that? That's a, you know, that's that's about four blocks a game. And this team will block more than that. This team will block. You know, the teams in, that are high level as far as taking charges, blocking shots, they're going, they're going to be pretty high. And, and they may lead our league in, in blocks because of all the, the length of all the guys. Last year we didn't have a lot of guys blocking shots. You know, Jalen Williams blocked shots, and he had 40-something. And the next was Stanley Amude, if I remember right. And then after that, it was J.D. Note. J.D. JD was like third on the team. Well, J.D. wouldn't be third on this team in, in, in blocking shots. He would be like seventh because of the length that you talked about. We hadn't even really mentioned Jalen Graham, who's a second-team all Pac-12, who a lot of people thought would come in here and start and be a huge – and you know, he didn't play a lot over there. He wasn't in the top nine there. And, you know, he was coming off the bench and playing uh, – <laughs> he was just trying to fight to get minutes. That's how much talent Coach has assembled on this team. One of the – you know, both of Mitchell t- twins had good, good runs at – Rhode Island. Now, Rhode Island wasn't very good, but, but they were their better players. They were their best players. And both of them were struggling to get a lot of minutes over there. And that was because of Kamani Johnson. That was because of Brazil. That was because of Ricky Council. That was because of these guys eating these minutes up that are here. Mm. And it's going to be, you're going to have to bow up. You're going to have to bow up to play. You know, and, and uh, that's, there's a lot of competition, and that, that's good for this team. They do. You know, I'm talking about real competition. Yeah, there definitely is, Coach. And when you look at this roster, there is just so much talent. And you go through these four games in Europe, obviously Trayvon Brazil, especially with game four, really capture the highlights. We saw Anthony Black, saw what Nick Smith can do. But out of the four games, who's a guy that you think that didn't get as much props as maybe he deserved from the media because it wasn't as flashy in the box score, but you watch the way that he defends. You watch the way that he moves in the offense. Who was that sneaky good guy in Europe that, you know, just because maybe he didn't have the stats to follow it up, didn't get the praise that you think he deserved? Well, that's a tough question, but as far as, because they all got pretty good praise, you Mm -hmm. know, there's a lot of media coverage for this team, but, you know, obviously Kamani fits that, and he's a guy that I I was going to practice this summer, and I was at a bunch of practices watching them, and I was at one practice, and a guy sitting there was watching. There was a lot of people going to the games, and he said, Kamani probably won't play any this year. And I looked at him and said, what? And he said, I don't think Kamani's going to play. These guys are all bigger and athletic. I said, no, no. You ever seen Kamani on a Saturday in Bud Walton Arena when there's 20,000 in there? He's flying around. He's taking charges. He's hitting people. He's bellying people up. He's coming up with every rebound. 
He's a really good rebounder. And uh, Kamani's going to play. And so I was happy to see him go over there. And he, he kicked butt. I mean, he kicked butt. And uh, he, he was outstanding. And then Barry Dunning, I, you know, he got media attention too, but I think he fits what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. A guy that maybe was – there was certainty about him. How's he going to be? He's a young kid, freshman from Mobile, Alabama, and he, he played very well. He played like an older guy. He had a he had a good bounce in his step. He was great on defense. Two times in a row in game three, he just reached out. He was guarding his man and just all over him, pressuring his man. And the guy picked the ball up, and he just – reached in there and grabbed it clean as a whistle and then did it again the next trip. Two times in a row he did that. His, and he scores good around the basket. And he, if he's open, he's going to make a shot because he's a good shooter. But those two guys were really good. And then there was a lot of attention on Devo. I thought Devo was outstanding. Mm-hmm. I thought he was outstanding. It'll be interesting. You know, He'll probably end up being a starter, but he was so good last year on that roll when he finally got going about February where he was really clicking February and March, he played really well, and he was coming off the bench. Uh, it, it'll, it'll be interesting what Coach does, but he's Devo's going to be one of the best players on this team, as he should be. He's an older guy. He's been here three years. He's got all this experience. He's been through all the rigors of the SEC. This is trip three through the league. You know, I think Devo was, was really, really good. Mm-hmm. And, and with this Europe trip, you, Eric Musselman talked about it. A lot of the players talked about it. Uh how much freedom a coach gave them, you know, when they weren't playing basketball, going, being able to go to leave the hotel, being able to do yeah. things on their own. Yeah. Is, is that not as common on these trips? Like I, I know you hear some coaches like we're going to work, we're going, this is a work trip, but no. I mean, is it really that like, you know, tight knit to where you could like, day of the game, you, you're not allowed to leave your room. I mean, it felt- no, I mean, every, every place does it different, you know, and every coach is doing it different. Most of the time on these trips, one common denominator is, especially if you go through basketball travelers, which this trip was, and they're based out of Seattle, they set up all the tours. When you go somewhere, when you're at Lake Como, and you get, when they got to Lake Como, I said, well, they'll be going to Bellagio, which is up up the lake. They're, they're going to get on a boat. And I mean, everything that we'd done before, I thought back to, and that's pretty much what they did. They kind of have a, a template these this travel group does and it's the same thing that women's basketball for the most part did and and coach gave them a good you know free time in the evenings or to do stuff on their own which was great for these guys but everybody does it different but everybody also goes on tours when they go over there they 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 kind of they kind of go see the same thing you know you go to the you go to the sagrada and you see the familia the big the big cathedral in barcelona that's just the stuff that you do and I'm glad he allowed them to do that because I have heard of coaches saying, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to take that tour today. We didn't play very good tonight. Last night we were tired. And so I think it was good that they did it and they allowed those guys to get out and see stuff that they're always going to remember. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, pretty pretty historic places in Spain and Italy. But it was good. And you get One thing that's another common denominator, you don't get to practice. So, you know, coach took them out on the beach and coach found courts where he could – work on stuff and do walkthroughs, which was great. And, uh, you know, the, like the one day they were out by the beach going through, walking through offensive plays on the beach. That's really nice because you don't get practice times over there. You just go play. I was looking for Woody Harrelson and Wesley Snipes there at that court, man. They were the only thing they were missing from White <laughs> Men Can't Jump were the beach. guys lifting weights at Venice Beach. They're just the, they kind of, I loved the, the flyover that I saw from that. That was so cool. Yeah, Venice Beach, it was awesome. Yeah, and, and – uh, but, you know, those guys, uh, it was good to see them out there and, and being together. That's the, one of the best things about the trip. The practices are good here. Everyone talks about that. But this is 1996, where you didn't get to practice all summer, so those 10 days of practice were huge. It's different now. You, you know, you can practice year-round. There's really not hardly any times that they can't practice. Now, in the summer, you're, you're supposed to practice eight hours a week. So when you get to this 10-day period, you get to go 20 hours a week. So you get more hours of practice, but you've been practicing all summer. They've, they've been doing that since the end of May. But it, it, that time together and learning each other, and I think it's great for Coach because, as I said earlier, he's already, you can see, he's already kind of evolving into who's going to play, who's going to be playing the most, who's going to play at critical times, and that's, that's, a, that's really interesting. I loved watching it the other day, guys. There would be four freshmen out there with Kamani, and then there would be three freshmen out there with Devo and Kamani, or there'd be three freshmen out there with Trevin Brazil and Kamani. 
and it was just neat seeing all the all the different rotations and how he was subbing and who he was playing together. And there's going to be some extreme competition the rest of August, all of September and October because Jalen Graham, you think he wants to play? Mm-hmm. I think he does. The Mitchell twins, you think they want to play? I think they do. Joseph Pinion, Darian Ford, those five guys were, you know, they, they probably weren't where they wanted to be. So that, that's good motivation for them. And that's part, that's not against the coaches. That's just life. And you got to go to work. You got to come in. If you, you got to have to pass somebody. Because coach said it the other day in a press conference, it was hard for him to play all 13. He said 13 was not a magic number for him, or something along those lines. So he's probably not going to play 13 most games. He'll play 13 in a 40 point win in Bud Walton. But, you know, when it gets, uh, in the, in the meat of January, February, and March, you just want to be in that rotation and you want to be, you want to be out there and, and, and fill in the action of, of the game. So it's really going to be interesting. Yeah. And Seven. I'm, I'm glad. Seven was his magic number, pretty much. Seven was just about his magic number. Zim, we got to run. We're up against it. Thanks for hopping on with us, man. Let's do it again closer to the season. You got it. Appreciate it. Matt Zimmerman. Matt freaking Zimmerman. I think I'll go with in that case. Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first-to-market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information, from live in-game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet Online today, or use your mobile device to join today and make your first sports bet use our promo code believe 50 to receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit that's believe b-l-e-a-v 50 that's believe b-l-e-a-v five zero bet online where the game starts